Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture series on Laplace transforms. My name is Mayur Gohil. In this video lecture, I am going to continue to solve one more example on inverse Laplace transforms using convolution theorem. In this video lecture, we would see it into some details of writing the answer using convolution theorem. Okay, let us try to see the problem. The problem is we have to find inverse Laplace of this particular function 1 upon s minus a times s plus a the whole square. Okay, so what is the first step? We have to see this function as product of two Laplaces. The Laplaces may be same, the may not be same. Like it might be here, suppose here it was only this function 1 upon s plus a the whole square, then I would write it as 1 upon s plus a times 1 upon s plus a. These two terms, they can be same or they cannot be same. It's fine. But they should be from the function. Okay. So, 1 upon s minus a and the second term is 1 upon s plus a the whole square. Okay. So, now, what is the next thing? We have to recognize 1 upon s minus a as an inverse Laplace of some function. So, if we are able to see that, then we can move to the second step and we can write that Laplace of f of t is equal to 1 upon s minus a. Then, f of t is nothing but inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus a is equal to e to the power a t. Having done that, similarly we go for 1 upon s plus a the whole square. So, if you let it as g of t, then you obtained it as g of t is equal to l inverse of 1 upon s plus a the whole square is equal to e to the power minus a t times t. Okay. We are done with finding f and g. Now, the next thing comes is we have to plug in up convolution theorem. So, by convolution theorem, what do we know is that our original question is equal to the convolution of f and g. That is f of t star g of t. That is same as the definition of convolution theorem or uh, convolution definition, sorry. Is the definition of convolution is integral 0 to t f of t minus tau g of tau d tau. Okay, that is what we have to use. Let us now go to the definition and use it. So, from definition, we substitute here instead of f, it would be e to the power a t, and instead of g t, it would be e to the power minus a t times t. Okay, so f of t minus tau, that means you have to replace for this function, you have to replace t by t minus tau and if you multiply a inside, you get e to the power a t minus a tau. Done. Then g of tau, you have to replace t by tau, that's it. So that is what you do over here. So, e to the power minus a tau multiplied by tau, d tau, that's it. Okay. So, after doing this, what you happen to get is e to the power a t times integral 0 to t tau into e to the power minus 2 a tau d tau. Okay. Why have we got this e to the power a t outside? It is because our variable under the which we are going to perform integration is tau. Okay, so anything other than tau, like if this is a function of variable t, it would be treated as constant. So e to the power a t has been treated as constant and it has been pulled outside. Okay, so let us now go ahead. When we integrate it further using UV rule of integration or Leibniz rule of integration, we obtain this as the answer 
use carefully the brackets and minus sign and everything plug up the limits when you plug in up the lower limit put a minus sign and then put a bracket carefully simplify it you get this as the answer and at step 5 you obtain your final answer okay so this is your final answer e to the power 80 minus e to the power minus 80 minus 2a e to the power minus 80 times t over 4a square oh big answer so fine but yeah you do get the answer now you can also use the alternate version of the definition of convolution that is f of tau uh, integral 0 to t f of tau times g of t minus tau you have to wisely choose here why i have chosen here uh, this definition is because if you observe if i use the second version here then i will land up using t minus tau for this variable okay this function i will be getting e to the power minus a of t minus tau and then here also i would have t minus tau so it would look a little complicated and i might go wrong while solving so better avoid such kind of things wisely choose which definition you want to use because when you get a choice you use it wisely okay so that is was the main thing and do not unnecessarily land up complicating your answer okay so that was the main thing regarding this video to choose the function wisely using the definition of convolution and that's it so i leave two problems for you to practice using convolution and uh, you can find their inverse Laplaces and you can revert me back if you find any difficulty in solving them. The method remains the same and the steps also, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 and 5, they are also same. You can follow the guidelines and solve these examples. That's it for today. Thank you.